All right, I'm gonna demonstrate for you the chromatography of M&M candies. I do have the instructions, which you should also have. Uh, step one, obtain a piece of chromatography paper. Measure, make a line across the bottom using a pencil. There you go, I've already done that. See my line and I have placed small dots on the line so that I know where to put my marks. Step two, along your pencil line, make five small pencil marks equally spaced. Done. Three, add M&M candies to a small test tube. We're gonna do this a little bit different. What we're gonna do is we're gonna line up one, two, three, four, five M&M candies on a paper towel. And so I've got blue, green, orange, yellow, and brown on this batch. There is red also, you could do six if you wanted to, um, but these are the ones that I grabbed. Uh, we need the dye to lift up from these. So what I'm gonna do is take my distilled water bottle, I'm gonna open it up, take a clean pipette, I'm gonna pull out some. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put one drop on each color. Okay, so all my M&Ms have a little bit of water on them. So it's gonna dissolve the dye in, in the candy coating and bring that into the water. So we're gonna let that sit for a second. And while that's sitting, I'll show you, I have a toothpick for each color. So all I did was broke, I broke up a, a long toothpick in half and we have the pointy side ready to roll. So each color should have their own. So everybody has a clean, clean one for each color. So, What we're gonna do is we're gonna take our pointy end, we're gonna dip it in the water that hopefully has absorbed some of the color, and we're gonna dot it right on one of my dots. So in this case, I'm gonna do the blue. So let me see if we have any color in here. Yeah, it's looking like it's got some color in there. So I'm going to take the blue, and I'm going to put a little dot of it right on there. Oop, uh -huh. A little bit of water. All right, let's try that again. Blue. blue. I'm going to set this down. I'm going to show you what I've done here. So you can see on my dot, you can see just a little bit of blue, maybe. Nice small spot. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the rest with their own respective. Okay, I'm gonna let this dry for a minute. You can see I've got spots on all my dots. Some of them are better than others. Some of them are a little big. The yellow got a little big, that's okay. 
Don't want them too big because then it's going to run all over the place. So I'm just going to dry this a little bit. Once it's dry, I'm going to go over and spot them again. Okay, blue. isn't very big. There we go. That's better. Orange. All right, here are my dots. They're wet. Again, that yellow. Oof. So I'm going to wave it around, get it to dry a little bit. Grab a pencil. drying. I'm actually going to, I got a mark on here where I put what color. So B is for blue, green, orange, yellow, and brown. And you can use lead from the pencil because it doesn't go anywhere when you do the actual chromatography, which you'll see in a few. I'm just going to dry it a little bit more. See, as it dries, colors are getting lighter. And I'm actually going to do one more spot on those. dye you can get on this paper, the easier it'll be able to see, oops, well, that won't be great, but easier to be able to see the results. But you don't want to make it too big of a spot because then it's going to run into everything. see my spots I had a little orange mishap but that's okay it should, be, it should be fine and again that yellow so I'm gonna go ahead and dry this it should be dry before you uh, go ahead and dilute with your solvent all right so while that finishes we're gonna set up our chromatography chamber we're gonna use a 600 ml flask 
glass stirring rod, paper clip. So this fits right in there. So if I take this, I can clip it to the edge of the paper. Like so, make it even. So that when I set it into my beaker, it sits flat and it hangs down. So it's not touching either side and it's not touching the bottom. Hang it a little bit lower here. Be careful not to put your, your stirring rod in the lip because that'll change the height. So by doing this, I've got it set up. I know it's going to work. And I also know about how much liquid I need to put in this. So if I look at this, I'm going to need about 150 milliliters of solution to get it to the bottom of the paper. So what I'm going to do is take this out. This is my this is a 0.1% sodium chloride solution that we're going to use as the elute. I'm going to put a little bit more in here. And I got a clean pipette ready to go. So I've got my setup ready to go. My spots are dry. I'm going to go ahead, get this ready to roll. Make sure it's not. Move around and set this down and in. So it's almost touching the bottom. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to carefully add some more of the eluding solution in here so that I can get it to the bottom. I'll probably be here all day doing it like this. So I'm going to pour it in very, very carefully. I'm actually doing it right up against the side. Oh, there it goes. That's all it took. Okay. So, let's see. The bottom of the paper is now in the liquid. And you can see it's a little bit, you can tell it's just a little bit darker. So, I'm going to move this, see it. see it's just like a paper towel that's getting wet it's pulling the liquid up the paper and as it's doing that it's pulling the dye up there too so we're gonna wait for that line of liquid you can see it's already up here to go up about half three quarters of the way and then we'll see what we got okay it looks like we're done you can see the water line and it's up to about here, so I'm going to pull this out. Take it off. Yes. I'm going to lay it down. Kind of let it dry a little bit here. I'm lay it down. Take my pencil, I'm going to draw a line so I know where the water, how high the water went up. That's a crappy line. All right. We'll let this dry, but you can kind of see what happened a little bit. So, blue, green, orange, 
yellow, and brown. You can see the blue. It's up here. Green is really faint. We'll get back to green in a minute. Here's yellow. Yellow is a big spot right here. So now we go back to green and we look. So you look, there's a spot here which coincides with the yellow, and it's yellow. And there's another faint spot here. So that tells us that green is made up of blue and yellow. And orange is a spot right here. Now we look at brown, and brown's got, looks like it's got that yellow, that blue, that orange, and it has red, which of course we didn't do. So it looks like brown is made up of all the colors. Cool.